massive magnitude 8 Richter earthquake hit central Peru. This was after a couple of days of very quiet seismic activity along what we noticed along the uh, San Andreas Fault and the eastern part of the Pacific Plate. This is on the Ring of Fire as we know on the eastern part of the Pacific Plate going under South America. The massive 8 magnitude Richter earthquake hit Peru. It struck northern Peru in the early hours of this morning, Sunday, sending residents fleeing their homes, cutting off power to at least one town. As you understand, this is a very big earthquake. The impact was felt as far afield as neighboring Ecuador. There were no immediate reports of injuries after this quake, which the U.S. Geological Survey said struck at a depth of 110 kilometers, 68 miles. The quake hit at 0741 GMT, about 75 kilometers southeast of Lagunas, along the Amazon basin near the border with Brazil. Some casualties and damage possible, and the impact should be relatively localized, USGS said in primarily assessment. The preliminary assessment, the quakes of similar depth typically cause less damage on the ground surface because it was so deep, thank goodness, but it may be felt at great distances from the epicenters. It's later added, the tremors were felt in northern and central Peru, including the capital Lima, where the terrified residents ran out of their homes, of course, to save themselves. The mayor of Lagunas, Ari Pezzo, said many residents were too scared to venture back indoors because of the fear of aftershocks. And of course, it would have been very big aftershocks after this. Now, you could you also, the other thing is you don't know if this is the uh, foreshock or the preliminary, the um, major shock, the major quake. So, uh, they, of course, it would have done well to, to, to get out of the houses. The mayor of Lagunas said they were too scared to venture back. He says, you could not walk at the time of the earthquake. Things were falling. Peso told RPP Radio Network, adding that it was difficult to determine any damage because the electricity supply had been knocked out. Therefore, you had no communications, obviously. Peruvian President Martin Vizcarra urged citizens to remain calm. In a message on his official Twitter, he says, we're evaluating the affected areas. The Minister of the Interior said on its official Twitter page that no injuries or deaths had been reported. Some houses, of course, collapsed. Hugo Arajo, the mayor of the city of Yurimaguas, near the epicenter, said there are many old houses that have collapsed after this very strong earthquake. Seismologists at the Geophysical Institute of Peru said the quake, which lasted just over two minutes, measured 7.5 magnitude, revising their earlier estimate of 7.2 magnitude. Experts at the U.S.-based Pacific Tsunami Warning Center said there was no tsunami threat because the earthquake is located too deep inside the earth. The shock wave of Sunday's tremor also extended into neighboring Ecuador. There were power cuts reported there as well in parts of the Amazon region. They said we have carried out the respective monitoring in each city to collect information and report damage after the earthquake, and so far we have no news. This is according to the Ecuadorian Vice President Otto Sonen Holzner on his Twitter account. President of Ecuador, Lenin Moreno, who is in Lima to attend the regional summit later on Sunday, tweeted that the town of Yanzaza experienced power cuts, adding that officials will provide more information about the quake's impacts. Peruvian media, media said the tremor was also felt in Colombia and also Venezuela. Peru lies on the so-called Ring of Fire, as we know. It's the arc of fault lines that circles the Pacific Basin is prone to frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The South American country of Peru records about 200 earthquakes a year, most of them going unnoticed by the public. In February, the, the uh, earthquake measuring 7.5 magnitude with its epicenter in Ecuador rattled the coast and Amazon region of northern Peru. And of course, and we know if, if a big quake like that does rattle the fault lines, of course, there will be others that will be uh, in, uh, in motion. <laughs> 
Now, the thing is this, there's also a lot of voca the, the volcanoes there. We don't know if this was caused by volcano quakes, or this was the previous ones, that is, or it's, um, uh, well, we don't know, actually. Okay, what am I saying? Uh, the 8.0 magnitude struck Peru early Sunday morning. Uh, now, going back to the what the USGS says, I'll, I'll let you see with me so that we can look at this together. Now, the thing is that we should not forget that we have had a planetary alignment, uh, which, of course, puts gravitational stress on the Earth, and there are major quakes because of that. We uh, did have uh, Hugerbeek saying that there will be a major quake of 7.5 or so. He said, that, he said that, I think, two days ago. Also, the fact that we have a CME coming in. We always have earthquakes when we have a CME, a CME coming in. And when we have planetary alignments. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the double asteroid, the, the asteroid that has its own little uh, st moon uh, rotating around it, but that's, I don't believe asteroids have anything to do with uh, earthquakes on Earth, but uh, unless they impact us or, or that huge that, you know, if they're a comet passing up. Anyway, but the planetary alignment and the CMEs and the fact that we're in a solar minimum, the solar minimum always has an effect of increased uptick in earthquake activity and volcanic activity as well. Okay, so here we are at Seismo Berkeley, and we have here the map of the Pacific Ocean, the Ring of Fire. This is a Peru quake that we just had, local time, 3.41 a.m. UTC is 4.41 a.m., and, uh, oh, let's go back into the details. Lagunas, Peru. And uh, should we go into uh, the interactive map? And let's go into the aerial. Now, this is the shake. No, no, let's go into the history. The history. Seismic history. Whoa, okay, well, you can see that. Okay, that's the seismic history. Liquefaction estimate. I don't believe there would be any there. Because it's not near. Ooh, but there is. <gasps> Look at this. Amazing. Amazing. That's terrible. And landslide estimate. We have no landslide estimate. Okay. Population density. Okay, this is it right here. Whereas we're populated here, right here. And let's go to the, again, the legend. No. no that's not what I want. Tectonic plates. I don't see anything coming on. Okay. Let's pull out a little bit now. That's terrible liquefaction. Terrible liquefaction. Okay, you can see that uh, basically it's on the coast. Not far from the coast. It's on the coast. And uh, let's go to the aerial. Let's go, is there anything else that we want to see here? No, let's go to the uh, aerial. Amazing. You can see all these earthquakes here, it's just full of earthquakes. Uh, this, should we go, this is the depth of over 300. Intensity, liquefaction probability of over 20%. This is terrible. This is, it means that there's a lot of water under there, obviously. Okay, population density, population per square kilometer. It's more populated here where it's dark. Okay, <clears throat> and oh, where I 
doing. Okay, close this and let's go to the topographic and grayscale and area. Okay, let's. Uh, I would venture to say that they're going to have a lot of terrible aftershocks. Okay, so let's go to the regional information. This is where we had it. Lagunas, Lamas, tectonic summary. And here we are, we're basically around here. Seismotectonics of the Nazca plate. It extends over 7,000 kilometers from Chilean margin triple junction offshore. It marks the plate boundary between the subduction Nazca plate and the South American plate, where this is the Nazca plate right there, right? We call it the Nazca plate. Where the oceanic crust and lithosphere of the Nazca plate begin their descent into the mantle between south, uh, beneath South America. So it's a subduction zone. That's why they have huge earthquakes. Uh, you know, huge means, you know, every, every, anything over 7.5, 8, 9, even 9. Many times when it's that, you know, that large, you can have a supersonic uh, type of a whistle. Uh, and if you hear that, you have a couple of seconds to just take cover before the big earthquake starts. Can you imagine a quake lasting two minutes? It seems forever, two minutes. Of course, things will be, uh, the, the rocks can be, in such cases here, in these um, uh, strikes of uh, earthquakes, can pulverize the rocks. The rocks just turn to dust. Even the buildings just turn to dust. Even if they're, you know, earthquake proof. They were only earthquake proof up to a certain Richter. My parents were both architects uh, my father was, uh, you know, he was in charge of, anyway, he was a uh, building supervisor in uh, one, of the, one of the four people that had the codes to change to the uh, building code, the code of certain buildings. But anyway, uh, he told me that the uh, skyscrapers in Manhattan can only withstand a seven magnitude quake. They can only stay erect up to a seven magnitude quake. If it, if it's anything after seven, they'll they'll just come crumbling down. It's just not feasible to build uh, buildings that that strong uh, over a seven magnitude. Just, they would just be too expensive to build. So anyway, these uh, huge quakes pulverize rocks. They turn them into dust. Uh, most of these large earthquakes in South America are constrained to shallow depths of 0 to 70 kilometers. This one here that we just had was 110. It was deep enough that it didn't have a tsunami or it was not felt that much high, uh, more, thank goodness. We didn't have any casualties, thank goodness. Crustal earthquakes result from deformation and mountain building in the overriding South American plate. Uh, I would like to go to some... Uh, now, we're going to go to some uh, things that we're going to see having to do with the monitoring of the earthquake, see how the worldwide uh, faults are, are doing concerning this. Is the earth again ringing like a bell? Okay, so earthquakes can also be generated to depths greater than 600 kilometers as a result of continued internal deformation of the subduction Nazca plate. Deep focus earthquakes in South America are not observed from a depth range of approximately 300-500 kilometers. Instead, deep earthquakes in this region occur very much deeper, as we said, 500 to 650 kilometers, and are concentrated into two zones, one that runs beneath Peru-Brazil border and another extending from Bolivia to central Argentina. These earthquakes generally do not exhibit large magnitudes. Well, we just had a big one. This 8.2, this was not 8.0, it was 8.2. This 8.2 earthquake occurred at a depth of 631 kilometers, which was until recently the largest deep focus earthquake instrumentally recorded, superseding May 2013, magnitude 8.3. So this is pretty big. This is pretty big. 
says 8.2, 8.3 down there. And uh, let's go back. We, we said we did not have a tsunami. Okay. Okay, we said again, it, it goes, it's their focal depth between 70 and 300 kilometers. All right. More information, impact summary. Okay, technical summary. We well, you want to go into that? You can if you want, but that's if we felt it or whatever. Tsunami, we didn't have a tsunami warning. We'll look at the heli plots after the magnitude 8.2 earthquake and a lot of huge, huge aftershocks. But let's look at the uh, 8.2 and the aftershocks. Okay, this I like because of the fact that it, it has the earthquakes. Uh, I want to see them. You know, we don't have them here. So I don't know what's happening in USGS, but we don't have them here. Now let's go to the, uh, you see, they only have one. Okay, whatever. Okay, they have it at 8.0, it was 8.2 before. Um, that's okay. Let's see if we can get to, um, no. All right, let's go to the, uh, okay, Alatra, because it has the, Huge, this is the area. Okay, we have this today 7.5. This was the 8.0, which is actually 8.2, at 1041. This was at 1041 again, 7.5. You can see 1041, 7.4. Seven point two, and forty one. Um, and that, now let's go to the tilt meters. Let's go to the t the. Uh, sorry, the heli plots. The heli plots. This is uh, Barbuda, Barbados, Panama, Grenada. You can see they're all blacked out. Cuba, they're all moving. This is in the Caribbean, of course. China is moving as well. China again. China. Data not available. China. Alaska is moving. Turkey. That's bad because they have a terrible... That's a subduction there as well. Ankara, Turkey. That's not good. That's not good. Russia is uh, not that much. Antarctica. What's happening in Antarctica? That's blacked out. Missouri is really, you can see the, the whole thing, Alaska, Oregon, Australia, not that well, it's moving, but uh, not as much as the others. Philippines, Tuvalu, it's not as much as the other. Florida, what's happening in Florida? Look at this. What is that? Ethiopia, Armenia, Germany. Germany has super volcanoes. All those mountains and beautiful lakes are all volcan volcanic areas. Texas is moving, Solomon Islands, Korea, Afghanistan, Norway, Finland, Ukraine, Hawaii. Hawaii has got its own thing going. Kenya, Norway, Chile, Zambia, Russia again. Which, which part? Magadan, wherever that is. Canary Islands, that's not good because they're all volcanic there. Japan is moving. Kazakhstan, Australia. Midways in the Pacific, Australia, again, Ecuador, of course, because they're next door to Peru, Spain, that's terrible. New Guinea, we just had a big quake there, 7.5 a couple of days ago. Antarctica, something is going on there. We know that there's over 100 volcanoes in Antarctica. South Pacific, South Pole. Cook Islands, Brazil, of course, because it's, it felt the earthquake. South Dakota, is, why, what's happening in South Dakota? Greenland, Puerto Rico, New Zealand, Pennsylvania, what's happening there? Taiwan, another part of Russia, Argentina, Namibia, Arizona is moving, Mongolia is moving, Indiana, 
weak island, I guess something's happened to their monitor and then they start off again. And um, Sakhalinsk in Russia, Yakutsk in Russia, Michigan, Ohio, Minnesota, or Idaho, Texas, New even New York. What's happening to New York? What is that? Amazing. The heli plots are really showing something. What was that? That was Alabama, Montana. Montana, we have a lot of quake swarms from Yellowstone. We know that. Bozeman, Montana. We'll have to take a look at that. They're not re they're recording, but they're not reporting everything. Montana, again, look at this. Utah, as well. Montana, again. Pennsylvania. Okay, so you can see what's happening. Uh, everything's on the move. Look at this. Texas is huge. Montana again, Lake Ozonia, New York, Alabama. You know, we had we reported yesterday concerning the um, 1959 7.5 magnitude earthquake in Yellowstone that uh, had an effect that took that was to, that took uh, it lasted two minutes, and that it had an effect on the water wells in Hawaii. And one of my viewers was kind enough to send me a comment saying it must have been a tectonic earthquake that has, of course, effects on volcanoes as well. Um, and that sometimes it could be somewhere in the middle of perhaps uh, Hawaii and Yellowstone and could have had an effect on both. Because we noticed in the past, it's not just a 1959 Yellowstone earthquake that had an effect on the water wells uh, losing water in Hawaii because something changed there. Um, it's also the fact that a couple of uh, weeks ago, our friend Ben Fiorullo, who does analysis of Yellowstone and other uh, seismic and volcanic activities worldwide, he noticed that uh, there was an earthquake in Hawaii, you know, around 3, 4 Richter magnitude. And they were, at the same exact time, there was the same magnitude earthquake in Yellowstone. And he picked up and said, what is that? Do, are they connected? Is Yellowstone and Hawaii connected somehow? And it could be because of the tectonics. Even though they're over 3,000 miles apart. It's amazing. And you can see the whole of these uh, heliplots are blacked out. Obviously, we saw this again with the Papua New Guinea quake that we had a couple of days ago. That was a magnitude 7.5. So I'll leave a link below for you for this as well. As we see, again, the earth is ringing like a bell. Now, we're saying it's ringing like a bell because it's being felt worldwide. And these aftershocks, again, are not going to be small. They're going to be pretty big, fives or sixes in the magnitudes, which is not small. And again, the whole earth is, you know, it's just, uh, it's like a wave. When you start throwing pebbles in a, in a lake and, and the waves keep going, and that's the way it is with the earth as well. So all this is keeping the, the tectonic plates in motion, which is not good as far as earthquake and volcanic activity because it's, everything is rattling. Everything is rattling. And I'm really, really, really concerned about what's happening in Turkey because um, they say that that's overdue for a very, very major quake around 8 or 9 Richter. And as you can see, you know, sometimes they've told us that a quake in one part of the world can have an effect on, uh, on a fault half a world away. They are connected somehow. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.